Hi everyone. We are having problems with our webcams today, so I hope you enjoy listening to my voice. Uh, thank you so much for being here. My name is Davin and I'm here on behalf of Virtual Graffiti. We have a great webinar for you all from Fortinet about securing endpoints and remote users, which is more helpful than ever now with everyone or most people working from home. First, a little bit about Virtual Graffiti. We are one of the fastest growing IT solutions providers for business, government, and education. And our team has a comprehensive knowledge of all products ensuring that you find the right solution. Our team is available to provide timely answers to all your questions on our website. And if you look at the bottom of the slide here that we have up, that is a unique link to purchase the Fortinet products you will be introduced to today in today's webinar. And if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free. There should be a pull down menu where it says questions and throughout the webinar at any time, if you write your questions in there, we will have a quick Q&A at the end to answer all questions. And with that, I want to introduce Joel from Fortinet. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Um, as he said, my name is Joel Boyd, and I am the director of SMB Solutions here at Fortinet. And for us in the SMB space, you know, we really think about it as we've got four core solutions: um, secure office networking, which handles, you know, that traditional office network environment with your firewalls, your switches, your access points, things like that. And then we also have uh, endpoint remote user protection that is designed to really supplement the office network with everyone working remotely now. Uh, we also do uh, secure cloud applications, email security, as well as the ability to oversee all of this from cloud-based management, centralized reporting, and analytics. So today we're going to talk about this remote uh, user experience. Um, Obviously, it was a big shift for a lot of people, and now we're going to talk about how we're going to protect it. But before I get into that, I've got to do a little uh, company advertising. So who is Fortinet? Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, most people think of Fortinet as this huge enterprise security company helping secure the large multinational organizations uh, around the world. And I'm not going to debate that. We absolutely are. But the truth is, and what a lot of folks either don't know or people who've been working with us for a long time forgotten is we got our start in SMB and we got our start in the SMB and were successful because we were building technology that folks like yourselves could not, you know, only actually afford, but it was giving them the protection they needed without making sacrifices. You know, when we look at the current industry landscape right now and a lot of the more security solutions tailored for small businesses and SMBs, what we're constantly seeing is that you're always just giving up stuff. Either you're giving up functionality, you're giving up performance, you're giving up security, you're always sacrificing something. And, I, you know, personally, you could probably have gotten away with that, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, five years ago, maybe even. But nowadays, like cybersecurity is such a relevant topic for so many people. I mean, you're seeing it in Hollywood, you're seeing it in movies, TV, our kids are hacking now their video games. Um, so it's just really important. So our approach is, yeah, simplicity without sacrifice. And that DNA of an SMB company, you know, obviously over time as our customers grew and their needs matured, we grew with them. Uh, and as they turned into successful large enterprises, we did too. But even though our offerings expanded, and that's a wonderful thing about Fortinet. So you can start with a very small scope but as your needs mature, as your vision of where you want to be gets to that point, we are still bringing that same ideology of an affordable, complete security fabric that doesn't sacrifice all that critical functionality and flexibility. Um, we just didn't talk about it as much. So obviously right now um, we are changing that. But enough about us, let's talk about your business. So if you're like anybody else in the industry, you are 100% all about growth. And you know what's really driving that is technology. You know, driving your ability to open new routes to market, share data easier, faster, so that you can provide not only your customers better experiences, but also make your employees more productive. The trick is we're consuming all this technology so quickly, and our business is adapting and changing. Oftentimes, what happens is we put something in, we're afraid to change it because it might break something. Or, you know, maybe we built something and all of a sudden our, our needs are maturing and we kind of found ourselves in a corner. You know, it's hard. Technology is two-sided. 
you know, it cuts both ways. So if you don't adopt it wisely and securely with a vendor that's going to give you the ability to grow and not have to do a whole bunch of workarounds or heaven forbid, completely rip and replace, you know, you're going to lose a lot of visibility and control. And when you lose visibility and control, all of a sudden you're going to see a lot more gaps and potential vulnerability. Yeah, more gaps, potential vulnerabilities appear. And with that, it's going to come more risk. But look, we get it. Like I said, it's in our DNA that we, we understand the term affordable because you're dealing with really tight resources. You know, you're still seeing a lot of the enterprise challenges. You're still trying to take on the infamous digital transformation, but finding the right people, finding the right uh, platforms that are going to give you the integration that you're looking for. Too often you're forced to make those trade-offs, those sacrifices between moving the company forward and securing those innovations and advancements, you know, and kind of crossing your fingers, hoping that you're not going to be targeted. Um, one thing that we do uh, a lot of times is we're not a big fan of opinions. We're a lot of big fan of facts and really just understanding what's going on in your all's world and kind of sharing that information with you. So this is something from uh, last, or I guess now two years ago, uh, Potomans, uh cybersecurity report called Lean in Businesses. And it's really just asking, you know, if you think about your own company, you know, how many applications are you running? And so this is a good information about just the industry in general, you know, 26 to 50, 51, you know, here are kind of the ranges. And these are the results. And obviously we had, you know, sides on both sides, uh, a little bit less, a little bit more, but that gives you an idea of where you can benchmark yourself compared to the rest of the industry. Now, here's a little bit of a scary one. You know, are you aware of the network of physical objects? Okay. This is kind of like an IoT idea because we're seeing more and more IoT. Uh, not only in things that you would you know, normally consider, but just you know, data sensors, uh, security card readers, I mean, everything's kind of becoming this way. So here's the question, what do you really know? And if you're you know, kind of in that middle to right side of, you know, don't worry, you're not alone. And the whole point of this is that, you know, it is scary and we understand that. And you know, at the end of the day, the way things have been going, you know, a lot of folks are doing kind of point product solutions. There isn't really good integration. You need a smarter approach, uh, something that's smart enough to handle the modern environment that you're trying to work in and or grow into, but also balancing that with what you can afford and handle with the lean IT team. So for us, you know, it really comes down to security's got to be smart. It's got to be intuitive almost, you know, and use technology, things like automation and machine learning to reduce the cycles and combat the modern tools that attackers are using to penetrate companies nowadays, especially now that we've gone into this kind of hybrid world, uh, even more so probably, hopefully, in the next few months. Um, you know, we just, we really need to have a platform that's going to be able to give us consistent um, uh, policies, regardless of how things change which means you know, complexity has got to be minimized. Nobody's got cycles to learn multiple platforms with different policies and configurations. You know, I think it's really difficult to look at traditional networking. You've got policies for your firewalls, you've got policies for your switches, you've got file, uh, policies for your APs, and you can actually consolidate all that nowadays if you have a strong enough NGFW. Uh, to be able to give you that consistent visibility control that you're looking for, regardless if you're dealing with network, endpoint, cloud security, it really shouldn't matter. But you know, at the end of the day, yeah, you gotta be smart about your investment, think about the ROI, figure out a way to get all the things you want without the sacrifices. So again, more on the research front, um, you know, we asked a survey of hundreds of our customers in North America in SMB, you know, companies making less than 500,000 in revenue to companies making over 25 million. Um, so I'd like to share some of those results so you can compare again and contrast on your own companies. So one question we asked was, what projects are you currently involved in or foresee the rest of this year? Uh, Respondents were asked to rank their answers and these were the top three. So not surprising as we face all, you know, as we all face the shift in how companies are operating and how we work together to stay productive. And the second reason actually explains the first. As we are driving more communications via VPN with everybody working remotely, we honestly just need a stronger secure office networking environment to support the traffic load. Uh, and a lot of folks are upgrading their infrastructure accordingly to make sure that they've got a firewall capable of doing that decryption um, feature. 
And then third, no matter how great you know our security is, obviously the Achilles heel is always going to be our users. Uh, so the more we can educate ourselves to spot attempts, you know, the safer we're going to be. And next, we asked everybody, you know, kind of what worries them about how they're going to be breached. I'm sure you've kind of got your own ideas here. Um, you know, and I'll point out that email wasn't an option. Email we consider as the medium. But what's happening is you're being fished in some way. Uh, same thing with ransomware. Attackers want your credentials to get in, drop their payloads, you know, investigate and kind of keep an eye on what's happening within your organization. Uh, so these are the results of how they're actually getting in in the first place and what people are worried about. You know, credential theft, unpatched vulnerabilities. Um, actually, I read a stat the other day that 90% of exploits start with scanning for uh, unpatched vulnerabilities and ineffective threat analysis of incoming traffic. You know, the classic question, well, we installed security, is it actually blocking anything? I don't really know. Uh, I'm actually gonna show you and talk to you about a free way you can check that uh, with us today. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to address these concerns and fix it. So in the context of endpoint and remote user protection, as our users are no longer behind your network per se, like you're not owning this or working off their home networks, you're giving them the flexibility to use their own devices, which they love, everyone loves that. But at the same time, we also have to secure these endpoints. And with today's technology, attackers are able to create a lot more mutated advanced threats that are targeting SMB, you know, that old adage of SMBs are low hanging fruit, hasn't gone away. If anything, it's actually probably more, um, more the case right now with this hybrid work environment that we're going with. Um, and honestly, you just you need a robust endpoint solution that includes things like endpoint hygiene, so you have a visibility into what applications are running on these devices, where your unpatched vulnerabilities might be, so you can actually do something about it. And it's got to utilize not just a single method of protection, but multiple in order to pick up on subtle nuances and behavior that might indicate an attack, which is going to give you the ability to detect attacks and take immediate action. So then we have to have to think about our, you know, great, we're all working remotely. How do we make sure that we've got secure communications from our work, remote workforce uh, and making sure they've got secure remote, or secure remote access? So we've got to make sure we're using tools like VPN, like two-factor authentication, and at the heart of it is going to be the next generation firewall that all the traffic is going to go into, making sure that it's actually capable of handling the loads and decryption necessary not to bottleneck all your traffic. So let's first talk about what's running on your endpoints and this notion of visibility and hygiene. So when we talk about breach prevention, you know, we can't avoid talking about one of the basics, you know. Packing. Everyone hates doing it. It's tedious. It doesn't have to be, but if you've taken a more traditional approach or you haven't started looking into more enterprise tools, packing is still really annoying for a lack of more aggressive terminology. Um, and 30% of ransomware actually gets in from, as I said, attackers just scanning users' machines to find exploits and injecting them through things like drive-by downloads when you go to malicious websites. Exploits. To be fair, we probably knew about whose patches have been around for a long time. You know, so why don't we do a better job? And it kind of comes down to application visibility, you know, because understanding what's on all your users' endpoints can be really difficult, especially if you haven't completely locked their systems down, which most people don't do. Uh, if we did, end users would be constantly yelling at us. Uh, while there may be some categories you don't allow, blocking everything often turns into more of a heartache than help when it comes to applications. So with 40 Client, you're able to understand what's running on your user's endpoints and automate patching across your environment. You know, so this is what you're seeing on the screen here. It's just a topology. You know, we can quickly drill down into particular users, see what's happening. And based on what they have or have not done, you can actually even control access to the network if you deem them too risky. And that's a great way to kind of softly enforce patch management. You know, I think there are a lot of users out there that get that, that notification. You should really upgrade your, your system. Yeah, a little something. Let me do that later. Let me do that later. Um, you can actually enforce them and make, make sure they actually do it. 
Um, but a patch alone might not be enough. So, you know, let's say they don't. Um, thanks to our integration between our endpoint and our network, so integration with our 40 gate NGFW, you can set conditional access controls. So same way you kind of do policy stuff. It's just basically say, if this person has a certain level of risk ascertained from all these different factors that the product and platform are, are analyzing, you can say, hey, you don't, you don't allow them on the network, or maybe they can only use the guest Wi-Fi. There are a lot of options available as we point. Um, happy to talk to you about it, but it's just a nice way to actually control who can get on your, your network and who can't based on the risk factor even from the endpoint. So let's talk about this notion of multi-layer protection. So it used to be, um, you know, I might be dating myself a little bit, but this, you know, layer defense, you know, best of breed layer defense model that DOD uh, started with years, decades ago. Um, and it used to be that, you know, folks would stack multiple security systems on top of each other that did the exact same thing. And they did this because it, in their mind gave them multiple layers of protection just in case something failed. But nowadays that same approach can be done with a single vendor and even frankly a single device. Um, you absolutely need to have malware prevention. That's you know table stakes because attackers are capable of mutating files to hide the previously recognized signatures. You know, so machine learning AV is essential to detecting both known and unknown malware. We value more than just kind of signature matching, which was what was traditionally done. But it's also not just malware. It's things called exploits as well. And there is a, a difference between the two. You know, exploits are really, you know, finding those, those errors in the code of the software. You know, you have to think about the end of the day, you still got software engineers writing this code and they're going to try do their best to make sure everything's locked up tight, but it happens all the time. Um, and it's Gartner's belief that 99% of vulnerabilities will be ones we already knew about uh, in our exploit prevention protects against vulnerabilities that either haven't been or can't be patched. Um, a lot of details that go into there, the kernel element, the machine learning element. Bottom line is we're we able to stop exploit prevention. And I've got, uh, you don't have to take my word for it, I'll show you some proof on that uh, shortly. So, Finally, we get to you know, detection and response. So we've talked about, we need hygiene. We need to understand what's going on you know, at the endpoint level, what applications people are using, whether or not they've been patched. We've talked about you know, VPN, whether or not they can actually get in securely, safely. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, and I'll use 2020 as a perfect example, suddenly everybody shifted. And the number one priority for everyone was, okay, let me make sure I've got my business still running here. I'll be honest, the security piece wasn't as high priority. Gotta be honest too, if I was in your all same shoes, probably you're taking the same approach. But where I would have been different is I would have invested probably in a security solution that even though things were changing, I still had the same consistent security. Not everybody had that. So EDR was kind of nice. It was that safety net, you know, that I always tell people, it's like, get your business in order then you know make sure you've got some EDR in there to catch anything as you're changing things that might fall through the cracks. And then once you've got your business back up and where you're supposed to be, okay, now turn back to security and get, you know, take a look at what's been happening, make sure you've got the right rules and policies in place to make sure that stuff doesn't happen anymore. And this is kind of that EDR section. It gives you that nice safety net. Uh, safety net. So we talked about discover and predict with hygiene. Now we want to just talk about real-time protection. 40 EDR, you have to understand, was built from the ground up to stop breaches and specifically ransomware in real time with things like machine learning, kernel best AV, a whole bunch of high end technology, feeds from you know, continuously updated cloud databases. And all of this just to make sure you can respond and remediate incidents automatically. Uh, we're going to defend everything from workstations and servers with current or really old legacy operating systems all the way to point of sale machines and even manufacturing controllers so 40 EDR is going to be able to stop and prevent all of that for you uh, and ideally you want the endpoints themselves capable of self-defense you know that's really where we want to start getting to self-healing self-defense so as soon as 40 EDR detect suspicious process flows and behaviors. You know, we, we understand what things are supposed to do. When they start not doing what they're supposed to do, something's up. Um, 
And so based on this behavior-based detection, we're able to diffuse things like fileless malware and other advanced attacks that just don't look like they used to. It's not as apples to apples comparison. They do a lot of things nowadays, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit you know, somewhere else. Together, they combine to create this thing. So you need to be able to make sure all the little pieces can be detected. And we're gonna be able to stop command and control communications, file tampering, and really important, the actual encryption that ransomware tries to do. So essentially at this stage, we are moving into real time to deny the attackers from achieving their goal and stop the breach. You know, we don't even want anything to encrypt to begin with. We just want to stop it when we start kind of smelling something and say, this ain't right. So then we kind of move into as much as we want security to be 100%. Nobody in the right mind is ever going to say that if they do. I'll judge them. Uh, it's the only thing I can say. Um, you know, ransomware can strike and encrypt your systems in minutes, if not seconds. So if your system does get compromised, speed is essential. So 40 EDR can standardize and automate incident response procedures with playbook automation, such as removing the files, terminating malicious processes, reversing persistent changes, notifying users that, hey, something's going on, isolating applications and devices, as well as opening support tickets automatically. You know, that is the hardest thing is first understanding something happened and then understanding what's been done and being in, keeping in mind the entire time you're doing that, stuff's still going on. So what happens if something starts to execute and your users are remote? So, you know, you can't necessarily maybe get to something. 90% of, 95% of IT used to just re-image and rebuild infected computers. But with everybody working remotely, can you imagine, and maybe you've even gone through it yourself, what happens when your laptop goes blue screen on you, you know, and you're not around an office or your office is hours away, you know, you're really, really in a bind. So with 40 ER, we're because we're collecting so much information about the attack, understanding what it did with code tracing that gives you that full visibility of the attack chain, we can automate cleanup and rollback while not interfering with the normal business processes. So you can detect something, you can all pretty much automatically revert back to its original state. And a lot of your end users won't even be the wiser. Okay, so robust endpoint security, you know, this combination of endpoint protection, uh, sorry, endpoint prevention, detection, and response is really what differentiates, differentiates our approach and results in this you know, robust, robust endpoint security uh, notion that we're delivering. Now, let's shift gears to talk a little bit more about secure communications. When we're away from the office, we need to communicate back, but in today's modern digital age, we gotta be smart and secure about it. And if you deal with customer information, you really do have to be using VPN and multi-factor. Um, again, think back to that survey of your peers, the number one worry was potential theft. You know, and it's just, it's something you just, we gotta do. You don't really have a choice, you know, again, Compliance is becoming stricter and stricter. The more and more data that we have out there as consumers and the more data that's being collected, privacy is an issue. Now, bear with me if you completely understand VPN. I know we're always talking to a wide range of folks here, so I'm gonna briefly kind of explain what VPN is and some key capabilities you wanna pay attention to if you're looking for a solution. So what is VPN? Why do I need it? Well, as we work remotely, you know, regardless of where it is, we've got to ensure we've got endpoint protection. That's a given. We've kind of beat that one pretty dead. We've got 40 client for this visibility. We've got 40 AR for the actual protection. But in the communications, what's happening is when we start going on the web and transferring data packets back and forth, that's when things start getting interesting. So in this example, I'm just connecting back to the office for applications, data, what have you. VPN is going to provide this encrypted tunnel to send information, but without it, what people don't realize is hackers can see your data packet. There's a great step-by-step -step article on Hacker Noon, um, so the Hacker Noon N O O N that explains what happens for anybody who's interested. But basically, I mean, it's really cool. Well, I think it's cool. <laughs> basically, there are legal tools you can get to intercept data packets. It's not until you start opening them up and reading that it actually turns criminal. And it's it's pretty easy, you know, I was reading an article this morning uh, about how Wi-Fi vulnerabilities, you know, are getting rampant and more and more people are starting to 
target them because not everybody is really good at always turning on VPN. There are a lot of reasons behind that. Um, but that VPN is going to give you that encrypted tunnel. So why doesn't everyone use it? Well, it's infamously slow. But usually that's not the VPN's problem. The problem is actually at the network. Decrypting information is hard for some firewalls now. And honestly, oops, it go, it, it's hard for a lot of firewalls and it takes a lot of power. And if the NGFW wasn't designed in a way to optimize performance, your use of productivity takes that hit and they're just not gonna turn it on. So when COVID happened, all of a sudden, there was a lot more users needing VPN, which put a lot more tax on firewalls, especially the ones that weren't designed for high performance. Fortinet, I am proud to say, I'm not gonna say it wasn't at all an issue, but it definitely wasn't as much of an issue for our 40 gates that are optimized for this kind of traffic. And we're just not gonna take that as big of a hit on performance uh, when handling decryption. But here's the thing, why should a user have to go all the way back to the main network when they could just easily connect to their SaaS applications directly from where they are using VPN, simply connected into the SaaS center directly. So this is this notion called split tunnel. And it's a great way to almost load balance your network. So you can basically say, you know, hey, I know that this traffic is going to um, you know, a SaaS vendor. Just go directly there. Don't back haul through uh, the back office. Just go straight there still on a VPN encrypted tunnel, and then rely on the um, application security uh, application security when it actually gets there. So it's a good way to kind of balance your load and not have to just constantly, constantly pay for more bandwidth, because uh, that's never fun. So bottom line, cut down complexity, you know, ask yourself some questions. Is the VPN solution you're looking at, is it included or is it a separate version? Is it a completely different platform or is it something you can manage from the same platform? Again, think long-term, you know, it's hard to sometimes think about the impact things are gonna have down the road, but the more point products you have, especially with security, that all needs to talk to together, the more point products, the less integrations you've got, and the less the communication is, which means things are gonna take slower to identify and slower to remediate, which nobody ever wants. All right, so we talked about input protection. We talked about VPN. Um, I should say also our VPN is always on capable. It's something that you can force your users to always have to use, which is great. Uh, we've got that split tunneling in there as well. It's included with 40 clients, so it's not an additional cost. But now we gotta talk about people impersonating us, us credential theft. And this is where multi-factor authentication is you know, so important. And, you know, we use it here all the time. Um, it's super easy to set up, uh, especially if you've purchased our 48 NGFW that come with that out of the box integration. Um, and before, you know, we, I have to use it all the time. You know, I get, before I get access to critical applications, I get a crest for my login and it immediately crests my token code. I get a pop-up on my phone and with one click, it auto sends the token and I'm in super easy and effective. Um, you know, it, it really is one of those steps that is probably one of the easiest ways you can prevent credential theft. So highly advocate two-factor authentication in some way, shape, or form on your network. All right, so all of this, but our remote communications terminate at the office firewall, which is our 48 NGFW. Um, and, you know, this can handle you know, all the load of decryption and inspecting. Um, this is a tremendous amount of power in this one little box is what we're known for. And, you know, you don't have to take, you know, the vendor's word for it. You know, don't take mine, don't take anyone else. Go ahead and do your research, see what's out there, see what industry analysts are saying. And, you know, you'll see the power forking that stacks up. And, you know, thinking long-term, is the vendor somebody that you can provide solutions that really fit your needs now and into the future? You know, are you going to have to make sure that you've got on-site IT staff everywhere? Or is this something that you can centrally manage from one location? Do you have the ability to do things like zero-touch provisioning if you're trying to send other networking equipment somewhere? You know, all of this is going to be included with the Fortinet solution so that you can cut your costs, improve your efficiency, and all those wonderful other buzzwords that you're looking for. So let's talk a little bit about our firewall. It is the heart of our secure office networking solution. It is the bridge into our endpoint remote user solution. 
And when many companies start out, a lot of security services are purchased one at a time, you know, often through different vendors. But the problem is ultimately you've got to manage all of these individually, which is going to take time and certainly doesn't simplify the experience for the team. But when you think about where the firewall sits within your networking topology, it is the obvious choke point. Uh, it's, you know, it sees all the traffic. It understands it's the most intelligent device that you've got. And we can and do take all of those security point products and consolidate, consolidate them into the 48 NGFW. Products like the integrated IPS, which I'm going to talk to um, in a second about, AV, application control, all the things that you would standard have to buy one off, all of it is consolidated into the firewall. And our firewalls actually also act as a central control point, which we talked about more when we're talking about secure office networking, that our firewalls can manage your switches, your access points. So you don't need to manage individual policies across multiple devices and platforms. You can do all of that again centrally with the firewall. So our 48 NGFW, there's a reason it's the most widely deployed in the world. Uh, it really just is that powerful. It's really awesome. Definitely, if you haven't taken a look at it, please do. But it doesn't matter if your security doesn't work. Um, so Gartner originally defined next-gen intrusion prevention about 10 years ago, and we've been building our for more than 10 years. And you'll hear me say, time and again, don't take our word for it. We believe in really strong independent third-party testing and verification, verification entities like NSS Labs, which unfortunately are no longer, but that's still you know, the quintessential reports that we've got. And you know, we're just constantly participating in these. And the results are we did really, really, really well. And What's even more important is that we're still going to give you the lowest cost to get you, you know, what you're looking for. We actually have higher throughput than we, we advertise. We, we take a, a conservative approach on what we advertise. And this is where a lot of vendors, you know, really get hit is that all the instant they turn on security, everything grinds to a halt. Uh, we have custom built technology, one of the only vendors that build their own uh, uh, processing chips. So that we can do parallel things and distinct specialized systems for certain things. And it makes it so that things like encryption are not going to get hit as badly when you're doing a lot of decryption or when you're doing a lot of security analysis. So that's really important. Uh, and I always like to bring that up because we are going to give you the peace of mind that security does work and it's going to adapt to give you the consistency, even though your business is changing. We've got to and you know, one of the big pieces behind why we're so effective is uh, FortiGuard Labs. And um, this is kind of an idea. So FortiGuard Labs is our threat researching entity and it powers our sandbox intelligence. So regardless of where something is seen in the, in the world, so where a potential malicious attack or, or something is seen in the world, every single Fortinet appliance, regardless if you own it or not, the, our entire network acts like a sensor feeding this service that's going to analyze over 100 billion events and pieces of information. Once known, we understand what it is, this threat intelligence is automatically shared. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to update. It's automatically shared, fortifying all of our customers' devices without your team having to lift a finger. And we're not talking about in days or even hours, but actually in minutes. And because this is where the fact that Fortinet is that large company does have an advantage, because we see and have such a wide range of customers around the world across every perceivable vertical and company size, we just see more advanced threats that are a lot of our competitors, ensuring that you're going to get the best threat protection possible, again, automatically. So again, simplified management, consolidated management. Plain and simply, the idea of needing an IT support person on site 24-7 is horrible not only from a cost and logistics perspective, but just think about if you're actually that person. And we all know problems don't happen during the day. They happen at the most inconvenient times possible. And it's completely intentional. If hackers are gonna really launch something, it's gonna be Christmas at like two o'clock in the morning. So ensuring that you've got an ability to remotely manage and troubleshoot is an absolute table stake must that, uh, nowadays. But even if you have that, if you have to jump across multiple platforms to ensure everything's in sync, you're going to add a lot of complexity. So if you're jumping from an endpoint platform to a network platform, to a switch platform, 
to an AP platform. You guys get the point. Why not just bring that all into one consolidated device and simplify the entire process? And think about it as you grow, as you scale, that single centralized spot to manage your entire network and audit environment makes things so much easier. Easy to say, hard to actually develop. It's one of the benefits of Fortinet actually truly being that one last native platform out there. You know, there were some other enterprise companies that started in that space. You can take a look at my LinkedIn. You can see where I've been. And it would always become a joke for us. It's like, can we please stop saying we're natively integrated? We've taken this merger and acquisition strategy and we're just trying to cobble things together. You know, one of the big reasons I came to Fortinet is because they really did have that platform approach. And I knew that such a critical component keeping complexity down, especially in SMB where you don't have resources to do so much specialized management. So making sure you've got all that. And again, just bringing this native integration, not only from the network side, but the endpoint side. Now, not a lot of network security vendors do endpoint um, or vice versa and put doing networking. So it's important to have that integration. It really makes life a lot easier, especially when you don't have dedicated desktop admin teams and dedicated network security teams. If you've got people doing everything, this is a absolute blessing in disguise. Um, so in the context of endpoint and remote use protection, you know, this is that topology view. This is me kind of showing a little bit more. You can drill down to the endpoints. You can understand what's running on them. You can see and understand how things connect. And you can drill through this all the way down to your endpoints and understand what they're running, their status, and even the potential vulnerabilities along with the events and logs. You can do all that from right here. Just double click in there and you get all that rich, awesome data that you want. And it's that tight integration that allows you to automate a lot of traditionally manual processes that would normally require you to notice something at the network level and flip over to another endpoint system and start triage. With Fortinet, we use automated playbooks with deep integration. Again, because we're natively built, everything's working off the same um, scorecard. We can begin making moves before your team even has cycles to assess what's happening. While some competitors may provide one or two of these, only Fortinet is going to bring you this level of deep integration. So, all these things we've discussed are wonderful, but not if you can't afford them or you have a large enough team and you don't have a large enough team to manage it. So, security has got to fit in your budget and operating cycle. Um, so our security fabric gives you the security you're looking for that can be added on gradually as your organization matures, then when compared to similarly priced offerings, you, you just get more money for, you get more for your money before the bottom line. Um, like I said in the beginning, it's our DNA that everyone should have access to enterprise grade security. You know, that's, that's really how the world gets better. We get smarter, we understand it, and we use it. And we want to make sure you've got right size the options and capabilities to fit your true needs. We can always grow with you later down the road. It's not going to be a different UI. It's not going to be a different capability. It's just going to be a more powerful, robust box to enable you to do what you need to do. And it's why year after year we're consistently recognized as a leader by industry analysts, including Gartner, NSS, and of course, our customers. So yeah, overall, just a smarter investment, uh, products that deliver a clear growth path and Frankly, with over 59,000 partners globally, you can easily find the expertise you need if you don't want to manage the system yourself. So, um, you know, I always say Fortinet is engineered for complete protection. Plain and simple, that's what we're designed to do. We're going to try our best to bring you that peace of mind that your security is working, that your policies are easily managed across network, endpoint, and cloud security with centralized management and analytics to help you consolidate everything visibility, control, and maintain the consistency, even though you may have a small staff. Uh, so today we spoke through endpoint remote user protection, and we encourage you to explore the rest of our offerings. So if you're curious where to go next, you know, you were kind of some of the products that I talked about today, you know, definitely let's set up a meeting and talk about them further and how we can fit them into your goals and what you're trying to accomplish. And we also offer multiple tools for your benefit at no cost. You know, you heard me talk about cybersecurity training, how, you know, it's going to become more and more important. It doesn't really matter what generation you grew up in. You've got to understand that security and people are hacking more and more. Uh, our, our cybersecurity training uh, is free. Uh, it's winning a lot of awards lately. It's awesome. It was a decision last year that we decided to just make it freely available and it's being consumed 
I have breathtaking space. Uh, it's awesome. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, we also offer free cyber uh, cyber threat assessment CTAPs. So these are, I mentioned this earlier, this is a way that you can understand, hey, what might be going on in my network? And a lot of folks think it's this huge, you know, complicated process. It's actually not, it's very easy and doesn't cost you anything. And in fact, 95% of the CTAPs we do are in the SMB space. And 60% of the time we find stuff. So take advantage of that free tool, um, no obligation for you. And um, at the end of the day, you know, look, we talked about one of our solution sets in SMB. You know, we're happy to talk to you about how it all pieces together is more of a complete fabric approach. So whether it be secure office networking, cloud applications and email, or just overall management, um, happy to have a conversation with you. And with that, I will turn it back to our partners at Virtual Graffiti. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for that. It was very informative. We have three questions so far. And if any of you think of a question afterwards, there will be an email sent to you where you could write your concerns or other, other questions to Virtual Graffiti, and we will get those back to you in a timely manner. All right, first question, is Forta client slash EMS being pitched as replacing the need for traditional antivirus software? Sorry, can you say that again? Yes, is Forta client slash EMS being pitched as replacing the need for traditional antivirus software? Good question. Um, traditional, it, it's hard to understand because traditional, when I think traditional AV software, I think, you know, from six, seven years ago, where it really is more of a lower common denominator using signatures to figure out, hey, have I seen you before and should I stop? A lot of more modern AUV nowadays relies on machine learning, uh, behavioral analysis. There's a lot of components just because threats have changed so much. So 40 client, you know, for uh, we, we've got these two endpoint solutions. We have found that 40 client probably does a better job at visibility and control. It does have basic um, AV prevention. But what we notice nowadays is the threats are just so more advanced that you need something more complex like a 40 EDR that's able to bring much higher visibility and analysis into the processes themselves and able to kind of piece, because as I said, a lot of you know, more advanced threats now are going to do a little piece here, a little piece there, and then together they come to, you know, to create pain. Um, 40 EDR is going to give you that level of power. Hope that answered the question. Perfect. All right, next up. Can all FortiGate firewalls, such as Fortinet 60F, handle endpoint security, VPN, and remove tokens? Or are all these features only available with the higher level FortiGate models, such as the 200 or 300 series? I don't know that off my, off for sure. Um, I'm gonna actually kick that over to Ben, who's my solution engineer, helping me out this one. <laughs> Yes, so with the OS, it doesn't really matter the, the version that you get, whether it's a 60F or a 200, all these features are available for all models. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, I, that's what I thought it was. So that's one of the benefits that we have. So a lot of our competitors, when I see kind of how they're going to market in the S&D, what they'll do is they'll give you this very different looking UI management platform firewall. And I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to say, it's like, oh, you're never going to need all this you know, other functionality. Here's this bare bones version. This is that sacrifice you know, notion I keep on bringing up. The challenge, though, is very quick. You know, they'll sell you on you know, simple, easy demos and you know, real basic use cases. But within very short amount of times, what a lot of folks who have left them and come to us have said is they quickly outgrew it. And all of a sudden they needed to upgrade to their enterprise model and it looked different. It had completely different functionality. It just, it was a different world. With Fortinet, you're gonna have that same experience because it's the same underlying operating system. It's the same look and feel. And we do that intentionally to give you, you know, if you're gonna learn a system, learn a system. Don't throw it away and then go relearn another system, especially if it's from the same vendor. That doesn't make a lot of sense to us. So 
yeah, regardless of what model, um, you're going to be able to get that same capability. What the only difference really is just going to come into how much throughput can you handle and what are you dealing with. Perfect. All right, next up is the cyber threat assessment portal something that as a managed service provider I can offer to potential clients or do they need to currently have a Fortinet subscription? Ooh, so absolutely. If you're an MSP, uh, absolutely you can run CTAPs with your clients. Uh, I would recommend reaching out to your partner manager uh, and just ask them, hey, I want to start running some CTAPs. How can I do this? Yeah, it's, it's a huge, huge uh, advantage that we're bringing to the market. Does EDR replace antivirus software? Sorry, one more time. Can EDR replace AV software? Antivirus software. Um, I, I, I call, I, I'm hesitant to blanket that. Our EDR can, but I can't speak for the rest of the industry. All right, and the last question. Can Android tablets be remotely managed? Android tablets. Ben, how do we deal with this one? If you mean as in like an MBM solution, um, it's not really what Forta EDR or what Forta client is meant to do. Um, it's for the Forta client perspective, at least, it's, it's basically just VPN and web filtering. All right, perfect. Once again, we're going to send out an email after this. So if you have any, if you think of any questions afterwards, feel free to write them in there and we'll get back to you. And once again, at the bottom of the screen, avfirewalls.com, you could purchase any of the products that you saw here today. Thank you for joining. Thanks, everybody.